So welcome people. Let me know in chat if you're hearing our voices loud and clear. These Numenera artifacts can be quite tricky if you don't have an experienced right to help you navigate them. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll, uh, we'll continue with our stuff, but let us know in chat that everything's going okay. We may need to make a repair roll. <laughs> But I have that chart right out open in front of me, so we're good. <laughs> oh, good! <laughs> it looks like uh, it looks like we succeeded on our repair roll. People are hearing right, us loud excellent. and clear. I, I didn't think the difficulty would be very hard. So, uh. so as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the Numenera. <laughs> um, I'm going to award that XP to Keen because he helped me back in town uh, before we left on this expedition. Cool backstory. <laughs> yes. Do we know that backstory? Uh, we mentioned it last time. I just, uh, I sometimes people think I'm lying and it doesn't go well. And uh, Keen stepped in and kind of smoothed over the situation for me. Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, your first decision of the session is going to be, uh, are you going to try to uh, get all the way to this new destination in one day, or do you want to take it in a more leisurely pace? Quo suggests that perhaps a leisurely pace would best suit our needs and would allow us to see interesting sights along the way and not okay. exhaust ourselves. You also uh, might remember, we talked about this last time, that you guys, uh, should you want, um, can actually make better time than the entire caravan. Mm -hmm. So if for some reason you wanted to go ahead or if you wanted to leave and come back, uh, you the, the wagons don't quite move as fast as you can uh, on foot. So. Uh, but Eldon loves those Bora so much. <laughs> uh, I, I would advocate for a a careful and cautious pace, given that uh, we have encountered already some dangerous Numenera. So uh, okay. let's let's be cautious for now and stay together. And if we see something interesting or need to split up, perhaps we do it then. And that gives me a little more time to forage for food and do a little hunting just to extend our supplies a bit longer. Yes, uh, you think you have uh, about 20 days worth of food, but supplemented with hunting and gathering, you can stretch that considerably many times over. Mm. Uh, okay, so, uh, oh, I also wanted to recap really quickly uh, because you found some interesting things last time. Specifically, uh, at the very end of the session, you found uh, something that you thought you could make uh, very, you know, very quickly just by attaching them to some boots, uh, some bounding boots, which uh, allow you to jump and run faster, basically kind of, they help, they help negate gravity under your feet. Uh, and I wanted to know um, who has those boots now? I think Kuo was carrying them just because he figured out what they did, but we hadn't decided he was going to wear them. I have that uh, carry-all device, which is <clears throat> probably not, it's probably in the wagon, uh, but yeah, maybe the bonding boots parts are in the, uh, are in that carry-all device. But if anyone okay. would like them. Tayrog, I, I do like sending you ahead of us, given your experience with survival and navigation. Uh, although I, I think with Kin's energy levels, perhaps the to, to ponder how far Kin could go in one bound is, is quite <laughs> uh, enlightening. <laughs> I defer to your judgment, Eldon. Uh, Kin, what would you like? I don't need them. I'm super fast. Uh, I'll keep <laughs> up with you guys. Just Perfect. whoever, who's the slowest? Somebody's probably a little bit slow. <laughs> I nominate um, Tay. <laughs> I'll take him then. And, uh, and since uh, you brought it up, the carry-all is the other artifact that you found, and uh, it actually can move as fast as the caravan, or, or really actually as fast as you. So uh, it can keep up. You would have to make uh, a depletion roll basically uh, every day that you have it active, though. So if you want to be conservative with it, you might want to leave it in. At this point, I'll be conservative. Okay. Okay. 
So uh, with that in mind, and you guys uh, found some new ciphers and whatnot too, but we won't worry about that right now. Um, you, uh, it, you make good time. Um, the weather is, is decent and it is, uh, it's, it is about mid-year, so the weather is warm, uh, but it never gets really, really hot uh, here in the forest. And uh, even after you kind of leave the edges of the forest and head out into uh, what is more like open plains with just the occasional copse of trees here and there, you uh, see, you know, it, does, it doesn't get it doesn't get very, very hot at all. There are no roads here that you're seeing at all. So you're really just kind of going over land. But the the uh, landscape is gentle and it's not difficult. It is probably about late in that first day that you see on the horizon to the south, so not in the direction that you are going, you're going uh, almost straight east, you see smoke, billowing black smoke rising up in the distance. Uh, Tay, you would guess that this is maybe two maybe three miles away but it's hard to tell because you don't know the the uh, size of the source of the flame so it could be farther but it's certainly not closer than two miles um i'll point it out to the rest of the expedition and suggest we take a look because it's not too far out of our way we could at least you know get a mile closer and take a better look does it smell like food cooking what do you smell it, there's no smell yet. You're you're pretty far away. I bet it's food. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Let's investigate. Okay, uh, you get closer. Um, maybe move uh, the caravan a mile to the south, and uh, you you definitely see that. You know you're you're getting closer. It's at least another mile. You don't see the source of the fire uh, and the. You're guessing that whatever is on fire is maybe slowly burning out because the smoke doesn't seem quite as strong, uh, but you're not, you can't tell what it is that is creating the smoke. It is definitely not like a cook fire or something though. Mm -hmm. It was very black and billowy. Is it smaller in scale than like a whole village on fire? You're at, at this distance, you're pretty sure that it's not like a whole village on fire, but it could be the size of like a whole building on fire if there was a building out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, we all could keep moving forward or I could scout out and catch up with you to the east. I'm curious now. Uh, Just because you think you're so fast with those boots. <laughs> I am fast with these boots. <laughs> uh... Let's stay together for now. Um, I am curious enough, but everyone be on your guard. So we'll sneak, we'll all do our best sneaking forward. <laughs> That's at least what I'd advocate for. Uh, well, with the wagons, uh, you're guessing that sneaking is almost certainly not an option out here, sort of in the middle of the open. Um, but if you wanted to go just the four of you, sneaking could possibly be a, an option. Let's go sneaking. Let us leave behind the float wagons and uh, go forth. Okay. I'm sneaky. Monty, I'm going to leave behind the carry-all, but I am going to put the retriever, one half of the retriever cipher I have on it. So in case I need to instantly call it to my side, I, I will have that. Uh, Very cool. May I invite Joe along with us, one of the five sisters and sort of the sporty one? <laughs> Joe's great. I agree. Okay. Yes, Joe is sort of the more kind of outdoorsy one. Uh, Mayan was sort of the the itching for a fight one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're 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 both pretty tough. Uh, but but Joe uh, is the oldest and is maybe the most level headed. Uh, certainly the most uh, uh, knowledgeable in terms of uh, exploration and, and the outdoors. All right, so the five of you then uh, head toward the south and you go probably about another mile and now you think you're, you're quite close. And what you see in the distance appears to be wreckage of 
you're guessing some kind of Numenera device. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, some bits of, of metal and things you can't quite identify, uh, but you're still pretty far away. And whatever was burning seems to be mostly out, mostly burned out. Cool. Can you salvage things from, you know, a burned Hulk? I salvage things from all sorts of leftover detritus. Well, this sounds like an opportunity then. And who knows, maybe there are people there who need help. Uh, I would like to keep watch and be scanning, you know, as we creep forward, getting closer to the, the site. I'd like to just be looking for movement for potential people. Okay. As you uh, continue to move forward, then, uh, Eldon, you see, as strange as it might sound, the, the, the largest mass from the wreckage that is up ahead, you see it kind of move, and then it stops. But, but it, it just sort of like shudders and... and and quakes a bit. No one else really seemed to notice that. Uh, I I snap two of my long fingers together uh, to get everyone's attention and point toward the the chunk that was moving. Uh, uh, It moves. Could it be alive? Or is someone caught under it? Or it might be in the the automaton. Mm. I have little experience with those. Uh, Shall I call out? <laughs> How far away at this point? Uh, at this point, you're still probably a quarter of a mile. Yeah, let's let's go a little closer. They probably couldn't hear us over the sound of the burning. Okay. You tell me how close you want to get at this point. How about a very long distance? Okay. So you get to, you know, maybe four or five hundred feet and you see uh this definitely seems like it was some sort of numenera device in fact uh quote if you had to guess you would say that this might be the wreckage of some kind of vehicle uh and uh the, but the interesting thing about it is is that it does not appear to be ancient uh, it does like like so many you know ruins and the wreckage of the Numenera that you have seen before. This you think this thing just crashed here not very long ago. In fact, you can see scorch marks on the ground and whatnot, uh, and you can kind of get the idea. You know, it, it's probably about the size that maybe like uh, you know, assuming that it was humans, maybe three or four people could kind of ride in. Um, but it is it is destroyed now. It is it is definitely going to be beyond repair. But it might not be beyond salvaging. Did it smash into a wall, or does it look like it just fell from the sky? Looks like it fell from the sky. Well, I will say, unless my eyes deceive me, this thing was of human manufacture and recently crafted. Let us see if there are any survivors. At the very least, there may be salvage. Do you think it's a spaceship? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps there are visitants there. Air, an airship, certainly. Yes. More Eldens. Uh, <laughs> do not call them Eldens, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think at this point, I'm going to call out and say, um, does, anyone need, does anyone need help? Uh, are you all right? You know, in truth, and, uh, and start walking forward and blowing our okay. cover. <laughs> Okay. So uh, take point. Looking for things that might have attacked it, I say. I say, look for things that might have attacked it. Mm. Why did it crash in the middle of nowhere here? So be careful. Okay. Uh, you you don't uh, you don't get any response to your calls. There uh, really doesn't seem to be any noise here at all, except. For for uh, a little bit of the sound of of burning, and it's mostly sort of that looks like that 
it, when it when it hit the ground, it bo- broke into a number of pieces, and you can see things. Uh, certainly, that that Kuo and maybe even Terog can identify to be wings. And uh, judging when you get close, it's really hard to tell because it's in terrible, terrible shape. But you're guessing that it was probably uh, like open on the top, and that people, if if they rode in it, they probably kind of rode in uh, on the top and. Uh, and there were wings, maybe four wings. And, you know, you're, you're more trained. eye, uh, Quo, you can see that like what, what this might've been is something that was in fact from a prior world that had been rebuilt, uh, and, and kind of cobbled, uh, and, and reappropriated by somebody maybe like you. And uh, uh, can you see quite a ways away from the wreckage what looks like a body lying in the tall grass? Let's go. Let's go. I see. A, I see a person. Let's go get them up. I'm pretty I'm, pretty sure they're dead. Oh, I don't think they're doing very well. We. It may still be. Let's go help them though. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be speedy and I'll head that way since I seem to be the fastest now. I'll stay with everybody as they walk that way. Yep. Okay. So uh, Terog uh, arrives first and it is uh, definitely a human body and it it's it's a grisly sight. This person was clearly thrown from the vehicle uh, when it impacted. So they're not burned, but they're... Broken. Yeah. So this potentially could have held multiple people. And I've seen people fall out of wagons before that are out of control. So do I have a sense of where, which direction this thing was headed when it impacted? And if so, I'd like to face the other way and see if there are any other people previously in that path that we might be able to find. Okay. Um, You think that it was probably headed to the North East, mostly North. Then I'll look to the southwest. Okay. Uh, that's where the crash is. Right. Because if you're standing in the body, the body was thrown. Maybe I'm not understanding what you're asking. If, if people like jumped out of this before it crashed, they would be further back in its path. Right. Uh, you don't see anything like that. Um, and there, is, there does not seem to be a debris field or, you know, a debris pattern that this thing was just moving along and then nose dived into the ground it looks like all right and i'll just scout around and see if i see any survivors okay so you guys are standing sort of at the farthest end or where one person was thrown from the impact um still you know you're still a, a ways away from the actual craft this person i cannot fix i say although i will kind of crouch down and and see if I'm wrong about that see if it is a person or it's it it was a human man um wearing uh clothing that would not be unfamiliar to you um you know of a just a, a sort of typical human make he's wearing like a uh a, a, a linen shirt with like a leather vest and i say may the aeon priests keep you in their memory And then look for any identifying uh, papers or anything that might suggest what he actually was up to or if something was not burned, anything of that nature. Uh, What you do find is uh, he has he has a, 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 a pouch that is still at his side and it is filled with tools. Uh, most of which are familiar to you, um, but some of them are different than that you haven't ever seen before. Uh, mostly for manipulating like something very small. I'm gonna appropriate those. <laughs> uh, he also has uh, five shins in there as well. It's not what, huh? <laughs> uh, but there doesn't. There doesn't seem to be anything else of, mm. of no, I think to identify I've... him, no sidearms or anything like that. No weapons. Well, I suggest we uh, bury this person well. 
I'm not sure. Does anyone have a, uh, a burial practice that they prefer? Yeah, we'll bury it so it's the, uh, as a sign of respect and so the predators can't get to him. Okay, so before you go and investigate the rest of the impact, you're going to bury this guy here? I'll make a note that that's what we're going to do. Okay. Just in case there's something dangerous. Okay. There might be other people too. Yeah, I'm okay. looking for other people. Okay, so headed in the direction of the of the crash? Yeah, because it seems this person was thrown very, very far. If yes. Anybody else probably would be closer to the crash. Okay. So the path that you take again through kind of tall grass, um, you don't find any more bodies and there's lots of scorch mark. You, you, you find some, you come upon some rubble and whatnot first, uh, but then there's sort of the main part of the wreckage, which is still kind of smoldering. Um, there seems to be kind of some kind of central core to it that uh, was what was belching out the black smoke. And it still is a little bit and uh, you're guessing might be dangerous to touch because it's probably still really hot, uh, but you can explore other parts of it. Just, just sort of that central part of the, of the main portion of the craft. Uh, closer in, you can definitely see that there is, uh, there, there was sort of on top, you don't know what to call it, but, but an area where there might've been some seats. You can in fact see like at least one seat still in there. Uh, just kind of open air on the top. There might have been some kind of barrier or something to protect from the wind, but that's long gone. Uh, but it is at that point that uh, you once again see like the entire central portion of this craft, the, the, the biggest piece of debris kind of shudders and it's only then that you see that there are these two kind of metallic looking tendrils that are reaching up from underneath the ground and they were holding on. You didn't really notice it. You thought they were part of the wreckage, but they were holding on to something in the wreckage and they just yanked it out and that made the whole thing move. And then they retract down into the ground. What do you do? Uh, I call out to everybody, there's some metal tendrils that are perhaps alive and grabbing things in this wreckage. Be careful. Uh, I hop back a, a good distance. You know, I definitely want to get out of it. I, I, I don't want to get grabbed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to keep watching. I'm not running away yet. Okay. Did I see these tendrils? Yes, you all see it. We all see it. Okay. Any uh, any way I can tr Numenera knowledge is that appropriate to try and uh, identify this, or is it just outside of our experience? Uh, I, I mean, I guess anything is possible, but it it is pretty outside your experience. You certainly have never directly encountered. Why well, rolled a five? So. Ar ar articulated metal tendrils that come up and down out of the ground. Uh, you definitely do notice that there are holes here and there in the ground uh, around the wreckage. And uh, Kin, do you want to take an action? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to lift my arm with my augmented graph uh, and uh, just be ready. Okay. Yeah. I check uh, myself to see how much metal I'm carrying. Uh, I don't know. How much metal are you carrying? Just a few bits of metallic items, probably in the ciphers. Okay. I don't have armor or anything like that. Oh, I have a I have a metal dagger, probably. Okay. That's idea. Uh, what ciphers are you carrying? Just me. I'm carrying a retriever, and a uh, telepathy implant, and a force screen projector. Okay. What's the force screen projector look like? Uh, the force screen projector is a uh, handheld device. Um, has two grips on it, and you basically aim it through this little view screen at where you want it to sh pop up, and that's where it pops up. Cool. So that's probably like in your bag or something if it's yeah. that if that, that size. All right. Um, well, uh, so this is a gem intrusion for Bruce, for uh, Vec and Kuo. And uh, 
you see that suddenly around you, uh, a couple of these metallic articulated tendrils come up out of the ground and they end in these sort of five, almost like fingers that are also articulated and they seem kind of grabby and they're uh, clearly reaching up and grabbing hold of your bag where you have that uh, particular cipher. All right, I assume you're asking for a speed defense roll? Uh, actually, what I'm asking for is what do you do? Because they have reached up and they have grabbed hold of the bag. Oh, shoot. All right. Sorry, that wasn't very serene of me. <laughs> <laughs> I will... Um, I mean, the bag is still... You've still got the bag strapped. Uh, you've still got the bag, but they have attached <laughs> themselves to the... The I don't know if this, it looks like it might be partly a machine, so just just on the off chance it is, I can't see the whole thing, I'm going to use an ability I have, which is called Scramble Machine. Cool. Uh, it's a short range uh, option I can hinder. I can basically hinder the machine for a minute in, in any action. I guess I, that's so, you know attacking, pulling things out of my hand, all that sort of thing. So it's not going to immediately do anything to it other than assuming it's a machine at all. And that's two intellect points, and I guess I make a roll to see if I affect it. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use one of those two XP I just got here. <laughs> it wasn't two. I mean, it wasn't one. It was two. <clears throat> Aha! And that would be much better with a natural 18. Ooh. Nice. Okay. And I'm going to uh, give that other XP uh, to Sean's character because uh, I'm sure he's gonna jump in and save me as a, someone with foil danger. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, this is a natural ability of Kuo's, right? Uh, it's a it's a right a character ability. So yeah, it comes from my understanding of, of understanding how machines and stuff work. Ooh. Okay. So uh, visually, I'm asking: Are you are you doing something to the machine, or is this some kind of psychic ability? Of I see. Um, it is. Um, I think based on Kuo's um, way he works with all the focusing mind over matter, sort of that's his for, uh, his um, his focus. Um, he is basically yeah doing some sort of psychic sort of mental manipulation of the machine directly in its. Uh, circuits or so you're so you're basically using your knowledge of the numenera and your own psychokinetic abilities to to nice. just kind of push annoy push it in the right ways and like, <laughs> so you you succeed you can see that the 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 metal tendrils kind of seize up ever so slightly and and don't you know aren't pulling as as well as as on your bag as they should uh be um, and so that, that seems to have kind of stymied it at least a little bit for the moment. And does anyone else want to take an action at this point? Yes. Are the only ones that we see the ones that are right now that are under Kuo? Yes, because the okay. ones that you saw before that were by the device disappeared down into it. Now, and that's like quite a ways Far. away from where Kuo is. Okay. The ground is full of amazing things here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ish. Yeah. How close am I to Kuo? I'm sure you're really close. Okay, am I close enough that I could move and still take an action? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I will do that, especially because I've got some speedy boots on. And I'm going to zip up there, and having seen these things kind of wiggle around and what I know about machines and how tentacles and you know load-bearing structures work, mm -hmm. I'm going to take my lucky pipe I'm gonna like bang on each, I don't know if this is one creature or two, but if I can get both of them, then I will. Uh, but I'm gonna use my foil danger ability and just kind of whack one or two of these tendrils so that they can't uh, like support their own weight and don't really have any strength to pull stuff away from Kuo. Okay. And what's the game effect of this? Um, I can negate a sort of potential danger for, uh, for one round. Okay. So basically, you're specifying their the the tendrils' ability to grab things. Yes. Okay. Got it. Ah. And I'm gonna make my roll, and I'll okay. apply a level of effort just because I don't know how difficult these things are. Okay. And I roll a fourteen. You are successful, okay. uh, and so in fact, uh, you whack these things with your with your pipe, and uh, it it 
makes the the sort of tiny little metallic fingers let go of Kuo's bag. That provides the perfect opportunity for me to uh, pull something out of my bag as I pull a little uh, iridescent strip and uh, tear it in half, stick one half to my forehead, and the other half I I apply to one of those tendrils. I'm going to try to use a uh, machine control implant, which, uh, yeah, and which I'm super glad that it can't grab me while I'm going to apply it. Uh, the the I, I would be able to uh, basically mind control the device at long range for ten minutes uh, per cipher level, uh, which like to let it do whatever functions it usually does, such as grab or not grab, move around or not move around. So uh, I assume I have to to sort of apply it, roll to apply it correctly. But so uh, I have bad news. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, and that is, you know, you're getting the cipher out and you're getting it ready yeah. to, 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 to do it and, and tear that apart, like <laughs> you said. And you see that it is, it, it's not working. The cipher like, isn't. Oh, yes. Wow. Like, so it's, it's not like it's, it's not like it's destroyed or used up, but you know that if you tear that out and stick that out, it won't. Wow. It's currently not functioning. Oh, No. Okay. When you say it's not functioning, do you mean the cipher or the thing she's attaching it to? The cipher is not. Okay. Uh, and in fact, uh, as you as you made your way over, uh, Tayrog, your, you know, you you were able to get over there because you're fast, but you probably noted even as you were whacking this thing with your pipe um, that uh, your your boots don't seem to be working right now. Uh, okay. Then I will call out, it's suppressing the Numenera. Oh, no. Say, careful, careful, Kin. It might, you know, hurt you physically because you've got a graft. <laughs> you can never have my arm. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> I'm backing up. <laughs> okay, you're backing up. Um, yeah, because I got long range, so. Okay, so you want to take, like, your full round of movement and move back, like, a short distance? Yeah, I want to get to, I'm tr- I can go as far as very long range, so I want to go as far back as I can out of... Okay, this. yeah, you, well, yeah, actually, you could, yeah, you could move a long distance cool. uh, if you're doing nothing this round but move. And, in fact, when you get a long distance away, because you are, uh, you know, this thing is grafted to you, right? It, it, right. The, this thing that's in your arm is kind of a part of you. It's about when you get a long distance away that you can feel that it works now, uh, but will, it did not work. It, it was not functioning. It would not have fired. I will holler at that point. So people kind of know, can see me and know the distance where thing, the, the thing starts to kick back in. Um, mm, that's helpful. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep it aimed on, on where the tendrils sort of are uh, for the future. Okay. All right. Uh, at that point, um, those tendrils that you have so uh, expertly uh, kind of foiled retract into the ground, leaving burrowed holes, like almost like you know gopher holes or something, um, behind them as they as they pull back down into the ground. Goodness. And uh, uh, the three of you that are still by the wreckage, you can kind of feel the ground kind of quivering beneath your feet as though maybe something is moving around, but there's uh, no other visible signs of any activity. And I'm going to go back to Kuo and ask for an action. Kuo would like to turn to face Kien, who is gesticulating from a distance, and head that direction at a swift yet serene run. <laughs> <laughs> so serene. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> you are standing over by Ken. Well, and, I, go ahead. I am a clever delve, and uh, I right. I am, and I am specialized in perception, and I am pretty good at navigation as well i'm just kind of like gonna focus for a second and see if i can see if i could feel where these vibrations are leading just to get a sense of where this i assume it's a creature is moving underground okay uh that is uh a a perfect example of a uh perception all right and oh i rolled natural 20 oh nice 
Uh, what would you like your special effect to be? You, I would like to know where this thing is. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I was. I mean, if I know exactly where it is and maybe like how far underground it seems to be. Okay. Um, you can sense that there is something that is larger than you, but not a lot larger than you, almost directly under your feet. Uh, maybe just like four or five feet underground. Uh, and it's, it's kind of moving quickly. It, it clearly is, you, the vibrations you're feeling are it digging and burrowing and whatnot. Okay. And I'm going to point like where it is and just keep pointing in that direction. Okay. And this, this part of the crashed vehicle that is, seems to be its power source that is giving off this energy. How easy does it look like for me to like yank that thing out? Um, yank I mean, does, it, it, does it look like it's like very integrated in this machine or is it just kind of patched on with a bunch of wires and rope or somewhere the, in the middle? The, the sort of central hot core. Yes. Um, you think that that would be, would be a quite a task to pull that out. Okay. Um, and to be clear, it seems like this thing, when it was reaching up and grabbing things off of this, even it wasn't trying to grab the central core. It was grabbing like little bits and pieces, maybe iotum, um, from this thing, uh, and, and it pulled them underground. Okay. Uh, was that kind of using my perception? Was that my action? Not since you're old at 20, it's not. Okay. Uh, I'm going to follow with Kuo just so we can kind of group up and decide what we want to do without me being, you know, in danger while everyone else is figuring out their plan. Okay. So that leaves Eldon uh, back, the only one kind of close to the wreckage. Right. Tip, you probably don't get as far away as uh, Ken and Kuo did. And Eldon, what do you do? I'd like to. Uh risk a moment to understand this thing more thoroughly. Uh, I'm going to use my ability understanding. Uh, I, it takes my action, uh, but I'll have an asset uh, toward interacting with this thing in the future. So I'm going to, you know, maybe study it and, and uh, let's see, are the tendrils, the tendrils have gone underneath, right? So I can't really study them. Well, they have, but as you're standing there trying to get your, in, your understanding. <laughs> um, oh, no. There are tendrils coming up from the ground next to you, and they seem to kind of be interested in that cipher that you had pulled out last oh, round. Very good. Uh, well, then, those are the ones that I am studying, and uh, perhaps, um, let's see, I have an oddity. Do, uh, can I make them interested in an oddity? <laughs> you know, that sounds like you're probably kind of persuasive and, and you're, you're right i mean you're, yeah. you're probably skilled in that i mean you're, you're basically kind of teasing it with something yep. so you potentially yeah cool. why don't you make a roll that's yeah that's kind of my like narrative explanation of how i'm trying to to understand this thing better is i'm, I'm seeing how it reacts to this other cipher also getting cool. also getting it to maybe not uh steal and, the cipher and, i actually want <laughs> and what is your oddity that you're pulling up uh the oddity is a um it's pretty cool, and so I'm going to be very sad if I lose it, but th this is the risk. Uh, it's an oddity that appears to be a piece of clear glass in a synth frame. Um, I can manipulate little switches on its sides, and uh, various images, uh, strange and That's incomprehensible, cool. keep flashing across this device. Uh, cool. So Okay, so are you are you just kind of holding it out, or are you, like, tossing it like a, like a piece of bait, or...? <laughs> uh, I... Wise or not, I am holding it out and uh, and sort of trying to you know manipulate it so that I can see how they. So I'm taking it away at the last second and trying not to get grabbed. So first, I want uh, to, you to make a roll to see how great you are at like saying no, don't grab this, grab this. <laughs> right. Uh, what kind of roll is that? I would like to spend an effort. Um, it, it's intellect, right? And yeah. and if you're skilled in in persuasion or manipulation yeah. or those kinds of things, that will totally apply. Okay, cool. It's just a different kind of persuasion. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so I have persuasion. I also have understanding motivations, which I think is kind of interesting. Maybe, maybe a little out out of the box here, but yeah. uh, you can use either one of those. Cool. I think I'm going to try to do the understanding motivations. I'm trying to figure it out. So I right. spend a level of effort. I am trained. 
And I roll a 16. All right. Um, so uh, the good news, maybe, uh, is that you definitely have got <laughs> I it. I so this. That, <laughs> uh, the things are not, inter- or the thing is not interested in the cipher that you really want to keep. Mm-hmm. But it's very interested in this thing that you're sort of dangling out. Um, but you get very. to make a, a dodge defense roll. Great. Uh, just see if you can kind of still keep it from it. Yeah, I will also spend a level of effort there, uh, even okay. though I'm not very speedy. Uh, okay, I spent a level of effort and I rolled a 12. That is just enough. So these things <laughs> just are, they're, it, it, you get this feeling almost like, well, and, and the thing is still hindered. Uh, oh, thanks good point. To Hulo. Yeah. So that helps too. Um, but, uh, you know, these things are almost like, you know, when they were grabbing at Kuo, I was described them as as hands, but to you, they probably almost seem more like mouths, right? Like hungry little creatures, kind of trying to snapping up, and but but you're able to keep it away from it, with them. <laughs> uh, and that is its action. So uh, I'm gonna go back to you guys who are uh, far off. Uh, Ken, you've reached a point where you know that your uh, cipher can work. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can blast it. How uh, how <laughs> I'm a little worried about Elden. <laughs> Is Elden in my line of, of blasting range, or do I have a good shot? Like, well, um, you know, there are probably there's probably one or two of the tendrils that are uh, blocked by Elden, but there's at least three or four of them around them. So, and, and, and I think it's all one. This, at least, this particular uprising is all one entity. I think we think, or do I not know? Uh, you're not sure, uh, but but Tayrog was kind of shouting uh, the what he had perceived, and uh, Tayrog, you definitely think that it it's one thing with multiple tendrils. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna take aim. For my this critter, uh, I can sh- I can use my cipher up to a very long range, which I think I'm definitely inside of, um, and it paralyzes the target. If I hit it, I'm going to use a level of effort. Um, is that it? I think so. And I roll an eleven. And you used a level of effort. Uh, you you it's come hindered. so close. It's hindered by Kuo's ability. <gasps> is it still hindered? Yes, I think you said a minute, didn't you, Bruce? Yes. I think you probably needed a 12. Uh, well, but you uh, used a level of effort, so uh, then you are successful with okay. an 11. I got it, I got it, nice. I got it! I didn't hit you, Alden! And Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so here's, here's the weird thing. Um, so your cipher, you know basically with its paralysis effect is 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 really useful against like living creatures right but you shoot it at you know a, a desk or a chair or uh, a hammer and it doesn't really do anything so you know everyone has been doing things uh, against this thing as though it was a machine or a device and those things seem to work but your paralysis also seems to work. Uh. Uh, but not entirely. It's as though you have affected some portion of it, not the entirety of the thing. So it's kind of like uh, it, like like parts of the tendril seem to kind of go a little limp, and uh, some seize up entirely, uh, but others seem okay. So it's mm-hmm. you have had like a partial effect on it. Interesting. Um, it, as though this is. This is both things, right? This is the living thing and it's a machine. I'm gonna roll and, my depletion really quick. Oh, okay. I'm good. And uh, Tayrog and Kuo, which one of you wants to take an action? Well, I have probably only got a short distance away since I had moved one round last turn, is that correct? Uh, you, if you used your, you used your whole action, so you could have gone a long distance. All right. <clears throat> Then I move, so I'm within a short distance. Okay. I mean, okay. actually, I, if you didn't want to move the whole time, you oh. only wanted to be a short distance. <clears throat> I think it would be kind of lying that I didn't want to be as far away as I could. 
So uh, at this particular juncture, though, that I, that I see it starting to become more and more hindered and paralyzed, and you know, I'm thinking about that poor guy who we have to bury later. Uh, it's a danger, and I think it should be dealt with. So I'm heading back uh, with the intention, and I say I'm going to try and pull it up with my telekinesis if I can, or at least further pin it so we can dig it out. But I don't think I can quite get close enough. I need to be within short distance to do that. Okay. So I'm moving in that direction to do that. Okay, so you're moving back. Got it. Tayrug. Um, I was planning on, I knew that I was going to be having to move pretty far, but I didn't want to leave Elvin too far behind. So I'm thinking I'm probably just one action's worth of movement away. Okay. Uh, could I run and make like a speed roll to be able to catch up to Elvin and still be able to attack this thing since it seems that we're attacking it? Sure. Okay, then I will make a, uh, a run and I'll apply a level of speed effort since if only your your bounding boots worked uh they would actually help you with this only i'll think nostalgically about the next time i get to use the bounding boots mm-hmm. and i roll i roll a 19. nice so, <laughs> my my lucky day we're gonna make oh, you we're... roll on camera in the future <laughs> okay do you want a minor special effect for your 19. um i think if i could just get in a good position to attack it without swinging near eldon that'd be great Perfect. Okay. And I will take a swing with my lucky pipe, which is not a Numenera artifact and therefore should not be oppressed by this. I don't think anyone was thinking that your lucky pipe was a Numenera artifact. Hey, don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's still hindered and it's sort of hindered from Keen as well, right? You think it's definitely being affected uh, by Kin, yes. All right. I'm going to attack it. And <laughs> I only roll a 10. Um, is it, did you modify your attack in any way? So, um, you actually, uh, you, you still managed to hit it. And so four damage. how much damage do you do? Okay. Uh, so you hit it, um, you, you're sure it has some kind of armor, um, because you're, you're, you're striking metal tundras, but, uh, but that seems to have some kind of an effect. Hey, now that I'm this close to it, and I could see how big these tendrils are, how it, it's leaving holes in the ground, but is it using it holes that were already there, or is it punching new holes? Both. Okay. Like, it's it's economical with its movement. If it's already made a hole, it's not going to make another one, but, but it also seems to be able to punch through the ground. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, what is Eldon going to do? You've You've kind of got this thing's attention. Yeah. Um, do I think this thing has an intelligence to it? Is it, is it detecting? Do it, am I noticing? Is it visually perceiving? Um, I, I work with illusions, but I just don't know. If this thing is all mouths, does it care? Oh, I, I, I see may not have been able to discern that. But Well, you know, you've got your understanding ability and you, you've been yeah. sitting here dangling an oddity. Um, it you're 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 not knowledgeable about the Numenera in particular, right? right? Nope. Um, so it's one of those things where you're you're sure this is probably not the not true, but it's it's actually acting as though the way a creature acts when it smells something, as opposed mm. to when it sees something. Hmm. Then my uh, gosh. My illusion includes sound, but not smell. So I, oh, yeah, yep. I think then uh, I will probably not try to do that. But uh, can I? Is there anybody that can I tell if any of my friends here are looking to do an action that I can maybe help with? So, looked like Kuo's getting ready for something. You could, you could. I mean, if. Uh... Well, I mean, Terog is, is running up and, and attacking it. Um, and you can always help either in that attack or in defending uh, him if he's going to continue, uh, if he's going to be attacked by this thing. Um, you certainly have, like, right now you have its attention. It is it is focused on you. So if you wanted to try to manipulate it in some right. way, uh, you are the person to do it. Um. All right, this is probably a bad idea, but I I got one of these tendrils attentions. 
And uh, give all the tendrils attentions at the moment. Cool, that's good. They're not <laughs> gonna appreciate this then, because uh, I have Numenera that could help me, but I they're not gonna help me around this thing. So um, instead, I'm going to wait till it's you know tantalizingly close to my little oddity I'm dangling in front of it, and then I'm going to get an arm in there, <laughs> and like like you get with a snake, right? You sort of get up by the neck, the end bit with your hand, so it can't turn around and bite you. You sort of wrangle it around your arm. And I'm going to try to cut at it with a, with a dagger so that I chop off this bit of tendril and run away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm okay. going to try to do. We will okay. see if this works. <laughs> Great. So uh, your action then is going to be to basically make an attack roll against yep. it. Uh, um, it. It's not moving as, as well as it should, thanks to two different effects affecting right. it right now. And uh, I have understanding, which, which gives oh, that's me... That's right. Yeah. Also helping. So... Uh, so it's maybe functionally hindered for me by three steps. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to spend a little effort. Is this might probably, or is it de- speed? I could I could go either way, depending on how they're, they're behaving. <laughs> uh, you know, in this situation, I'm going to say it's your choice. Cool. Uh, let's do uh, let's do speed. Oh, and this is a light weapon too, right? Yeah. And you're using a level of effort to attack or for more damage? Uh, if I think I'll do enough damage, if I can slice it off, right? Um, if I think the... Do I think it would take multiple cuts with the dagger to slice it? You think maybe, um, but if you, you know, if you if you did more damage, the more damage you do, the fewer cuts it's going to take, right? Uh, then I will spend an effort toward damage. Okay, Just but that will, uh, but but that, I'm going to revise what I said before. If you're going to add damage, it's definitely might. That makes sense. Cool. Okay. All right. Roll Go it. Go for it. Oh, man, a 19. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> um, so you, you definitely hit it. You do uh, two points of damage with a dagger, but three extra for a level of effort and three extra, yeah. unless you want a special effect. Hmm. A minor special effect or or three damage right so yeah eight, that would be a total of eight damage the, uh, let's do eight damage you 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 do exactly what you described you reach around grab this thing like a, you're holding it like a snake slice the tendril <laughs> off and even have time to get away with holding it while it's still kind of wriggling right and uh when you slice it off there are you know, things that you recognize to be mechanical, you know, conduits and wires and whatnot, but there's also some organic fluid dripping out of it. You wouldn't call it blood, but there's something, there's something organic in there too. Let's not forget about part two of this plan, which was run away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, and, right. And I think uh, Eldon, all, all the while doing this, I think maybe has some sort of what constitutes sweating for a Vargellan, but otherwise looks really you know, unperturbed, uh, you know, they just, uh, Vargellan react a little differently to stressful situations than humans do. So they look a little bored, uh, even though <laughs> you, you maybe, you maybe notice that that's my face when I'm like very concentrated and stressed out, but the expression resembles boredom. So, but I run away <laughs> in fear. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get, uh, uh, a, not, not a very far distance, but no. you're gonna, uh, but you're gonna get away a little bit. It is at that point that there is kind of where Eldon was, uh, there is a rumbling and something just emerges kind of burrowing up through the ground. And uh, it looks almost like the top of a metallic egg. And now you see what look like eyes kind of around the top of it. Uh, in a in a very sort of unnatural sort of pattern uh, around the top of it, and this and it's clearly this is the thing that is sprouting tendrils and whatnot. Uh, it a, a couple of the tendrils kind of reach out and grasp toward Eldon as as they move away, um, but you're you're kind of moving out of the way of it, so it focuses instead on Tayrog, and uh, the tendrils lash toward you. And basically, um, even though it's got all these different tendrils, it they sort of make one coordinated attack. So you you need to just make one defense roll. I'm going to apply a level of effort to my speed defense. Okay. And I roll a 17. Wow. 
You guys are having a very good night. Spending um, a lot of points. You uh, you easily uh, duck out of the way of this thing's grasps uh, as it is uh, attacking you. And in fact, now that it's it's not really trying to grab Numenera, but it it seems to, as though it's trying to hurt you. You can see that uh, protruding out like in the of the middle of the end of the tendril is a long almost dagger like needle so it's it's not grasping at you it's kind of stabbing at you okay i apologize you can hear a car alarm going off in the back i want to have a public service announcement people of earth no <laughs> one in the last 20 years has heard a car alarm and thought wait someone's breaking into a car they've only thought <laughs> car alarms don't use them we actually can't hear it, so... Oh, good. And then it's just me. So now you just sound crazy. <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> <I'll get that. laughs> Sean's hearing car alarms again. 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 All right. Uh, so that was its action. Um, what? Uh, Kin, go back to you. What are you doing? All right. So as Elden runs by me, I am very sure that I yell, is that for me? Because I totally have plans to graft that onto my body next. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and after that. Sorry, Elden but, hasn't quite reached you, but you can still. Oh, absolutely. It comes toward me then. Mm -hmm. I yell, is that for me? Um, and how close am I up to uh, Tayrog and Kuo at this point? Uh, well, they've both kind of run back to it and are engaging with it. So uh, you're a long distance away from them. So can I move within a short distance of them and still take an action? Am I, am I close enough? Um, and get a, and, and a short distance and get Stop an action? Um, yeah, sure. In this, in this situation, okay. that's fine. Um, so I just want to run up and I want to start like yelling, um, you, you, guys are, you guys are amazing, you've got this, and do encouraging presence, which gives them an asset okay, for that's... one minute. On different levels, and that'll work for Elden too. If 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 I can be in that space, um, so that lasts for a minute. Okay. Cool. Cool. Perfect. What is that uh, an asset to? Did you say defense rules? Cool. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna try and scramble the machine again. Although I'm gonna change the usage slightly and render the machine in range unable to function for one round. For one round. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, since it's already hindered from its earlier usage, plus whatever else, hopefully it won't be too bad to roll. I'm not going to use any uh, effort. And I'm going to roll a six. Uh, you do not affect ah. it. Oh. I'm afraid. So much better. Tay. Um, well, since I am the one that's in melee range with this thing, and we've demonstrated that it can be hurt, I am going to take a swing at it, and I will apply a level of effort for damage. Okay, and at this point, or now that you kind of ha have seen the exposed thing itself, you're going to attack that? For its body, assuming that's its body. Okay. And I roll a two. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm afraid that, yeah, you don't even really hit it. It's just kind of a... We're gonna miss. Go cipher turns. <laughs> uh, and then Elden, you are uh, uh, just a a quick run away from it, still close by. Yeah, how's you can this? Get farther away if you want. How's this tendril doing? Is it still fighting me? Is it got no? Uh, you know, away? it kind of wriggled for a, a little bit and then it stopped. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna stay where I am and. Uh, I am going to uh, shoot a blow dart at it uh, from far off. I'm going to try to, trick, you know, there's this big base of the, the creature, right, that's sort of risen up like an egg, and that seems a bit easier for me to shoot than the tendrils were from afar. So okay. um, I am going to, yeah, and I'm going to spend, uh, even though it's pricey, I am going to spend a level for damage because these don't do very much. So we're going we're gonna to try it. Okay. Cool. So go ahead and make your roll. Yeah, it's being hindered a couple levels, right? So it's still got Kuo's effect and my understanding. And your understanding and um, what Kin did to it, yeah. which is sort of a partial paralysis. So. Cool. Uh, plus, it's a light weapon, so that's that's eased four levels, which can't hurt. And then one level of effort for damage. I rolled a ten. Okay, you so hit level it. Level seven. Yeah, excellent. So that's going to be five damage. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, so Got it good. you bit. managed to actually stick the, the, the dart into it. 
um, and it 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 seems to harm it. And in fact, with that roll, what you probably did was you probably shot it in one of its eyes. Oh, cool. It has many of them, um, <laughs> but that's probably how you managed to actually do the damage. Sweet. Hey, more eyes just means more vulnerable. <laughs> Is that the way it works? All right. <laughs> Uh, so at this point, it's going to make, uh, its attack and it's going to continue to attack, uh, Kuo, I think. I'm sorry, Terog, Terog. Okay. I missed um, But I get, uh, it's my defense is ease because of Kin's ability, right? Yes. Okay. So I got another 19. <laughs> wow. But I had a two last time, so it's, it's okay. It cannot. It cannot seem to touch you. In fact, that's another minor uh, special effect. Um, I'm going to be in a good position uh, for next turn to make an attack. How about that? Okay. Great. Great. You're, so your next uh, attack can be eased. Great. Uh, and let's just go ahead and resolve that right now. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to apply a level of effort for damage because I, I don't want to be swinging at this thing all day. And I'm running out of might, so this is kind of critical. Yeah. And I roll a six. Oh. I have an XP if you need one. Have XP. Oh, you know what? I've got XP, so I'm going to roll XP. I'm going to use an XP. <laughs> going to roll an XP. I like I'm rolling roll XP. XP. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, there's a 12, and I got that uh, eased from last time. That is a nice, solid hit. Uh, so with your uh, effort for damage, what? how much damage do you do? Seven. Nice. That is a resounding hit uh, on it. Um, tears away some of the the outer, like like a like a metal plate from its outer hull, and you expose what looks like uh, kind of like what I was explaining before uh, with the tendril, um, a, a weird mixture of both what you would think of as as like circuitry, but also looks like veins pumping something. Pretty gross. Cool. What are you going to do? I'm going to try what I did last round. Okay. Uh, this time, I will row, uh, roll the Sean number of 19. All right. Uh, would you also like a special effect? Yeah. I would like uh, a special effect to be that next time a lucky pipe gets stuck into it, it will do even more damage. Than... <laughs> nice. Okay. And so, it doesn't take any action, this particular, I mean, assuming it works. It takes right. Um, so basically it's, um, it's the, the paralytic effect. How long does the paralytic effect of your cipher last? Uh, one minute. Okay. So it's probably about done. So it's, it's sort of like the, the organic parts of it have been paralyzed and you just paralyzed the rest of it. Uh, so it, it is just kind of, seized up real tight right now um, and is not moving. Get it, Tayrock. Uh, Kin, do you want to take another action? Um, let's see. I, I'm, I'm within the range where my cipher won't work, correct? You're, At this yeah, point? Your ciphers okay. are not functioning. Um, I think... I think I'm going to go back now that I've sort of bolstered everyone and got them high on defense. I'm going to go back to my original starting space um, and prep myself for the next time. If I want to, if I want to try to uh, paralyze it again. Okay. And what about Eldon? Goodness. Uh, I'm still a little out of my element, although this thing is, is starting to succumb, I think. So uh, I think let's see. Uh, now that I know it has eyes out there, uh, can I craft a little illusion to try to hopefully set up um, Tay or someone who's going to land a, a nicer blow on this thing? Um, just sort of distract it. And I was thinking about, uh, oh, well, well, yeah, do my illus illusory abilities function around this thing, I guess is a fair question. Uh, what is the source of your illusory abilities? Um, they are, I, I believe, cat. They are, uh, I think, I, I believe I had written down that they were implants, so they, it would be kind of tech related, which makes me think they don't work. Might not work. Cool. That's fine. Sorry. Uh, I try to uh, 
loose and uh, and I fail, so I, I... <laughs> loose. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna shoot another blow dart really quick, uh, okay. even though it's it's starting to wear me down. But this thing's got its its sort of hull exposed. It's not looking great. So um, I'm not gonna spend any effort. Uh, I yeah, I can't spend any more effort. <laughs> so uh, here goes. Oh, and I rolled a three. It goes pinging off. Yeah, I'm afraid that just bounces off its outer hull. Mm -hmm. It takes no action. So uh, what are your actions going to be? Well, we can just uh, go back to uh, Tehrag. So Kuo has like paralyzed its organic parts and Kin has paralyzed its mechanical parts-ish. Other way around. Other way around, okay. I don't but it's only paralyzed. It's a uh, what what Kuo did only lasts a round. So you have, right. the, but Kuo has also kind of set you up to do even more damage. Right. So um, I don't want to lose this opportunity. So I'm going to attack it, and I'm going to apply a level of effort, and I'm going to use my lucky pipe. Uh, one end of it is actually sharpened, so I can make it stab. It's like a spear. Yeah. 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 So here it goes with a level of effort for damage. Yes. Okay. Oh, you know what? Everybody go for damage. I'm going to go for accuracy just in case. Uh, you think, I mean, this thing's not moving, so it's going to be really, really easy to hit. Okay, well, then I'll just go for uh, for damage. It'll have lots of super bonus damage. Okay. And I roll a 17. Oh, nice. That's even plus one damage. Uh, definite hit. Uh, why don't you total that up for me? All right, so uh, four from the spear, three from my level of effort, three from Kuo's effective level of effort, and one from the plus one, so that's 11. Okay, uh, so you used, like you said, the sharpened end of your pipe like a spear pierced this thing's armor, um, and uh, you know how. Uh, so all the little, all the little eyes, um, they all just kind of bulge for a moment and then kind of go dark. All right, and I'll kind of like wiggle the spear around a little bit, see if it reacts to that and if it seems to be inert now then i will wave everybody else to come over okay that was some great teamwork agreed thank you for all the help goodness i appreciate yeah nice i appreciate job. everybody helping me look good <laughs> you did look good tara uh I, as we get closer are our ciphers and stuff still like can i no my body uh, they, like it's right Yes, they all power comes back to your yeah. various devices. Cool. Um, it was definitely the thing, whatever it is, that was suppressing them. Goodness, uh, that seems like an ability I would love to be able to harness. Uh, can you make heads or tails of this strange beast, uh, Kuo? And its inner world. Yeah, once, uh, once everything looks like it's been dealt with, I will approach it and see what sort of salvage I can uh, get out of it. Um, I mean, I suppose we could try, you know, if I start tearing it apart, it's not necessarily that we'll learn how to suppress the mm -hmm. I'm not, I know I can put things together, but I, if I don't know what something does, it doesn't necessarily mean I learn how to do it. What if you, so we can salvage it for shins and ciphers or salvage it for yeah. item. How about we focus on like the cipher aspect and maybe we'll find something that's relevant to that ability. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna look for whatever. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you find shins, sometimes you find ciphers, sometimes you find iodum and ciphers and shins. It's just what happens to be available. Okay, but uh, Kuo is gonna be doing the salvaging? I mean, yes, I could look for something in particular, but I have nothing in particular that I that I have. And I don't have to be the one to salvage, actually. You're probably better in salvage. Uh, I'm trained, so I think either way we can help each other and it'll work out okay. about the same. I'm just going to watch. Um, I am actually not trained. I have had my inability trained away, so why don't you do it? Uh, okay. Then I will uh, make a salvage roll just to okay. see whatever comes up. Actually, Kua, are you looking for a particular kind of iodum for the things that you plan for, or are we just gonna see what At we got? At this point, I don't have any any specifics in mind. So. All right, then I will apply a level of effort to my salvage task. Okay. And my help. 
and Kuro's help, right? And my axe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can I bestow that, that tendril upon you since your oh. eyes had lit up so furiously? Thank with you. <laughs> and for salvage, I roll a nine. Okay. But I have help from Kuro, and I'm trained. Right, right. Absolutely. So that's perfect. Um, so what you find uh, are nine, you know, bits and pieces that you think you can pull off and, and call them shins. And uh, you also find, uh, let's see. Sorry. Mm -hmm. New stuff. Uh, New chat stuff. is excited about getting to see salvaging in action, so. Okay. Um, you find uh, uh, three units of uh, something that you can identify as being pliable metal, which is a type of iodum that you can incorporate into some things. Uh, but then you also find uh, a, a, a curious looking bit of, of shaped crystal that I think we have a, a cool little illustration of. Uh, looks like it could, it could fit into your hand. Um, this seems to sort of have been, um, you know, somewhere in the, in the heart of this thing. Uh, oh, uh, you also find uh, let's see. Four parts, uh, four four units of parts, mm -hmm. right? Which is just uh, constitutes, you know, usable struts and screws and nuts and bolts and things like that 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 you can use for various things. Kuo, do you have any idea what this crystal thing is? No idea. It doesn't I don't recognize it as iodum I've ever used, but um, mm. I'll study it. I'll help yeah, you study don't, it. You definitely don't don't think that it's it's iodum, um, but you think that perhaps it has a, a, an effect like a a cipher or artifact. I will try and understand. I will make a roll to see if I can figure out how to use it. Yeah, understanding Numenera is is perfect. Uh, oh god. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna use an XP. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a one. It was a two. Was a second. Oh, Twos. Twos are your thing now. You, yeah. you can re. You can, you can just spend effort and retry rolls. I will spend effort because that would be smart anyway. In fact, I will spend two tiers nice. worth of apply two levels of effort. Uh, so ease it by two steps, and I'll roll a nine. And uh, let's see. And you're trained. And I'm trained. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, curiously, this doesn't seem to be something that has anything to do necessarily with the, the direct effects that you saw this creature machine by organic thing, um, display. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with suppressing the Numenera or sensing the Numenera or anything like that. Um, as near as you can describe it, this thing, thing seems to have some effect on on gravity or or on spatial uh, relationships, because basically what you can do is you can affect a a creature or object and move it. And then wherever you will, wherever you move it, it will remain there in as long until it is affected by natural states. So, if there was a box on the ground, you could move it up into the air, and then it would rest wherever you put it, as though it was still resting on the ground. Before it, the ground is now you know thirty feet in the air or whatever. But if someone came along and pushed it. They could still push it, and then it would probably fall. And uh, this is an artifact again, not a cipher. Wow, cool. 
uh, I, I neglected to mention there is also a cipher that you found. Uh, Trying to understand that as well. Okay. First bare brained with one level of effort. That will be a 15. Uh, this is um, one level of training, sorry, not. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, this seems to be much closer to the uh, nature of this thing in that uh, it will it will detect it, it, so it's a it's a handheld device it kind of looks like a tube it's got uh some controls on it and a, and a small glass panel and you think that it it can detect iota cool. um, but it's a cipher so it, you use it once uh but you think that because you are knowledgeable about such things you could actually in fact set it for a particular type of iodum and get a read. Kuo, Kuo, I know you hold a lot of Numenera stuff, so you probably don't have a, a problem with the amount of ciphers that you have right now. But if you do, then just let any of us know and we can... I'm actually full up because I haven't actually used any of my ciphers. So if someone would like to carry this, I can't use it. Maybe the Delve. I am full, but actually I'm really worn out right now. So I'll use my regenerator cipher to free up a slot. Okay. And that's a level six regenerator, level six. So I'll restore six of my might and then I'll take that cipher from Kuo. Okay. And uh, I'll hold up the uh, shaped crystal gravity nullifying artifact and explain what it does and suggest that either uh, Keen or Elden take it. Hi. Um, I don't have any free slots, but uh, I am I am not much of a fighter, and I have a new minute. It's artifact. Oh, artifact. okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, happy to hold on to it for us. Um, these finds will be really important to establishing a new community. Thank you so much for applying your efforts here. They are valued, as are you, <laughs> human member of my team. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Monty, what level is that iodum detector cipher? It is level five. Okay. Well, we also have the wreckage to look through now that we're no longer being attacked by this creature and uh, that person that uh, we need to bury. Mm -hmm. How about we let the rest of our group know that we're coming over here and we're going to be here probably at least an hour. I mean, I know about salvaging, so Monty, just having seen the wreckage, but how much time do I think it'll take to salvage, given that it's about 15 minutes or so for each location? Right. Um, so you've already spent that amount of time salvaging this bioorganic creature, this scavenger thing. Uh, and so, you know, it's probably going to be, to give this whole thing a, a once-over is probably going to be, you know, half an hour to an hour. But Joe volunteers to just run. Uh, she's been kind of hanging back. Uh, she's she's really not uh, much of a fighter, um, but she's very knowledgeable and, and capable. And, and uh, But she's happy to run back if you want. She can convey a message or she can have them come here if you'd rather. How about I lend her the bounding boots so she can go even faster and then she just brings them over here. Okay. I want fan art of that if I can get it. Joe in bounding boots, bounding away from us on this burning pile of wreckage <laughs> and salvage. <laughs> is, speaking of the burning wreckage, is, has the smoke calmed a lot, or is that yeah. middle part of the section is it still too hot to sort of approach, or or was that what we pulled the really good artifacts out of? No, uh, you haven't actually salvaged the craft right. at all. That was the the creature. Mm. So, uh, there's still plenty of salvage here to do with this craft. Um, and, you know, while they're doing that, um, you know, the surrounding area, you can find uh, much closer to the craft, kind of all, probably at least one of them in the craft. There are two other human bodies in here. All They're all dead. Yeah. And uh, 
One of them, however, uh, although most of it is burned away, um, there is uh, uh, has a, just just a, like a single piece of paper. It looks like actually they had a, a, quite a few papers, but almost all of them burned, and so there's just one little remnant left. And uh, there is uh, some writing on it, and it. It's a part of a larger phrase that you don't see the entirety of, but you definitely make out the words in in the truth, in the language that you speak. Uh, once you return to Paris, and uh, Eldon, you recognize the name Paris as being one of the supposed faraway Aldea mm. oh, that right. you had hoped to establish contact with. Uh, and it says, once you return to Paris, right? Yeah, it just says, once you return to Paris, and then it said some other stuff, right? But you just kind of find that fragment on the, the body of a, of a woman who died in the crash. Yeah. Um, I, I, I let all of you know. Um, is there anything we can place here pointing to the direction where this craft came from? So so that if we were trying to track down that Aldea again in the future, um, because they, they were coming in from the north east? No, they were headed toward the northeast. Headed toward the northeast, okay. But we don't really know if they were going or returning. <sighs> okay. I suppose the we probably have notes that we've been taking sort of map-like notes on, right? Or someone in the sure. party has, sure. so... Yeah. I mean, I'm trained in navigation, and Joe's uh, good at it too. So together, okay. I think getting a good sense of where things are. <laughs> Value uh, human. <laughs> Thank you. The only thing that you find significant on the third corpse is a uh, medallion which bears the symbol of the Order of Truth. Ooh. Oh wow! Have we had much run-in with them, uh, having grown up in sort of the beyond, and um, I suppose they're... the Aldea have right. Yeah, uh, well, in the town that you're from, um, even if it doesn't have any current uh, Aeon priests, they are not unknown there. Mm. We'll snag that. Let them know one of their, their kind has been... Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we can use it to identify at some future date, this person. Can okay. we at least like, get an idea of what these people look like before they were dead so that if we do find this aldea, we could say, oh, it was a woman with, you know, you know, medium brown hair tied like this, and there was a man who looked like this? Probably actually easiest to do that on the first corpse that you found. Okay. Because these guys, the others are, are burned pretty badly. They didn't, they were not thrown from the wreckage. They were just in the crash. Let's... I'm sure the, the number of people who were sent out in a flying vehicle is probably fairly small, so they would be able to narrow yeah. <laughs> now, which uh, flying vehicle was that that we had? Let's uh, do our ceremony and bury these people first. Just okay. It feels, uh, feels a little ghoulish to do it the other direction. Agreed. Okay. Um, so you, we might uh, even wait until the wagons get here, which has some more of our tools and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely shovels and whatnot yeah. like that in the, in the way. Okay, so the, uh, eventually Joe returns with the, the rest of the caravan and uh, everyone kind of comes out and starts looking around at this and they have, they have questions, uh, but you're able to answer them as best you can. Right. Um, do, you, uh, do you actually have, do you bury them together? And do you uh, have like a, do you say some words? Do you have a ceremony? And if so, who does that? I actually just look at Eldon briefly to see if she, they, excuse me, would mm -hmm. like to, uh, I'd like to uh, say something. Um, Are you familiar with human burial customs? I've been around them enough, but you're, uh, you vary so, you, you vary so among different populations. It is difficult for me to tell, but at least one of these is from the order of truth. And I know some, something of their customs if I'm, you know, or at least what, what would it be appropriate for that? Um, what do we think the a, a what what do we think one example of an Aeon priest burial rite might be? Uh. 
I would imagine that they say stuff like, um, you know, commend your body to the prior worlds where it will become one with the drit that is a continuation of all existence upon the earth. Something like that, says Kuo. Ooh, beautiful. Um, I, I think Eldon gives a, a Vergellan take on that, right? About um, uh, for one whose bodies are so, are so static <laughs> in life, uh, you are now part of the cycle of unending change that you know the ninth world brings us. Um, I, it is an honor to uh, to join you in that cycle, something like that. So, I think we, with the two of us together, we eventually get somewhere <laughs> probably acceptable. <laughs> cool. Okay. Very nice. Uh, certainly, um, Joe and uh, Man and, and their sisters. Uh, yeah. You know they kind of stand quietly around as as does uh uh his name is Morit. um he just kind of stands in the back he's not much for ceremony mm. yeah. um but but we shouldn't delay too long here i suppose now that we know what we know uh we still have we don't know how far we have to go to the or, or we probably know vaguely how far we have to go to the numenera ruin where we expect yes. to investigate. Yes. Well, we, were, we were delayed a bit and taking it kind of at a casual pace. Mm-hmm. And we're going to stay here for another hour to salvage these things. Ah, mm-hmm. you're, you're guessing that what you thought was going to be about a day and a half trip has now turned into two days. Mm-hmm. So you probably won't arrive there until dusk tomorrow. And speaking of which, it is, it is soon going to be dusk here today. But I need another salvaging... Uh, attempt. Um, should we do these all together or uh, one at a time? I will just help you out. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, again, are you are not looking for anything specific? You're just searching? Uh, if Kua is not looking for anything particular, then I'm just searching for... I should have been a little bit more up to date on the plans that I have and searched through them, but uh, I have I have not done that, so I'm not looking for anything in particular. Okay. I need to do three of these. Um, two, two. Okay, so I'm trained and Kuo uh, is helping, so that's a total of two steps. Okay. And I roll a natural twenty. <laughs> you do not. Yeah, I do. <laughs> And and a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How how balanced of you? Uh, remember that if you spent points on the roll where you made twenty, you get those points back. I did not spend any points. Okay. I'm I'm pretty tired right now. Mm-hmm. Understood. Uh, then what you are able to recover from uh, the wreckage of this craft is. Uh, nine units of synth steel Ooh. as well as uh, uh nine units of parts as well okay and Ooh. uh anything else there were there were probably you probably saw some things that were uh of interest to you but they were destroyed they're burned and very melted. close to that hot core thing mm. yeah okay well, when I become fireproof, we'll come back. While they're salvaging, I would like to look at the um, tendril that I have and see if I think that it's something in the future that I can actually graft into my body or uh, or not. I am <clears throat> trained in uh, healing surgery and handling pain, if any of those are useful. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you had somebody... Uh, you, you you believe that if you had someone who was knowledgeable about maybe modifying this thing, um, yeah, it's it's potentially something that you could graft on. Um, and uh, depending on who you got to help, probably you know it, it, the the different things that it could potentially do probably vary. Okay, that was my second question: was whether I could discern that or whether I needed to ask some for some help for that. You know, as it is now, without some modification, it it won't do much. But okay. but maybe. Well, I'm going to keep it then because I okay. I just wanted to know if I needed to 
you know, if it was worth carrying it around. Cool. Cool. It also depends, you know, as you, as you move through your, um, your focus too. Right. Cause that's how, that's how you get new abilities to graft on new things. Right. Right. I have, I can do biological parts from creatures at this point, in addition to ciphers. Um, and so the question, the question was whether or not this is a biological part or uh, not. Uh, I see. Um, you, you think you could make that work? Cool. That's the two because it's right. bioorganic, you're going to have to get somebody who's knowledgeable in the, the uh, I'm not biomechanical is what I meant to say. Sorry. Cool. Uh, the mechanical parts. Cool. Um, Eldon, they're just uh, going through and checking in and sort of comforting the whole the whole crowd and making sure they were okay. Um, and I think preparing for, you know, we will, it sounds like we might make camp here or not right here, but nearby, right? Um, and so I think I'm just setting up for that. Um, At one point, um, you know, some of the sisters kind of come around and they're like, you know, they, they looking at this, at this thing, and then they're looking over at their wagons and they're like, well, one of them says, uh, in fact, it is, uh, it's Alia. Alia says, why don't we have things like this? Why are we stuck with these wagons? And um, Morit just kind of kicks the side of like the wing and he says, you never give me up in one of these things. <laughs> uh. If humans were meant to fly, we'd have wings of our own. <laughs> uh. Someday I will, someday. <laughs> <laughs> I grafted him right into my... Humans are much more malleable than you give yourselves credit for. <laughs> I do take a look at this thing in case I, you know, maybe some future plan could involve some sort of lifting a little farther off the ground than two feet. Although looking at this burned husk, I am I'm like, mm. <laughs> more so the uh, parameters than what this obviously had. We'll call it the Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, uh, so you can, you can do a little sort of rough calculation as a, as a smart uh, right, and think that this thing probably was it was it was farther than two feet off the ground. It was it was it, it fell from quite a distance, but based on the range of the thing that could cancel the Numenera, it must not have been more than maybe a hundred feet in there. That's where they went wrong. Not close enough to the sun after all. <laughs> hey, so I know we were salvaging this um, for Iodum. Uh, did we get parts along with that? Yes. And can we salvage like some just scrap metal and some scrap synth and throw it on our wagons that might be useful later? So that's what parts in the wings. That's what parts are. No, parts is like screws and screws. I mean, like, do we have like a shield size panel that like scrap synth that just, just like could be used to build a to wall someday? Crap out of? Yeah. The crap. But. I mean, we have to, might have to re. I mean, if something looks especially interesting, I would like to grab it. That's okay. part of my thing. But if it's all just burned and wrecked, then I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Yeah, sure. You can you can find a few pieces of, of sort of torn up synth that probably couldn't ever be actually used in a, in a proper device. But, you know, you could start making the, the tin roof of a shack or something out of it. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Okay. Oh no, I, our wagons are going to be so full. I can see this happening. <laughs> yeah. The poor Bora. <laughs> uh, does anyone need a, a rest? Yes. I, if you'd like to come sit by me, I can help you with that. That would be lovely. I can make it all better. <laughs> yeah, I need an hour rest and I'll, I'll need to sleep very well tonight. Uh, you can make a, you get a, if you're within short range of me, I add plus one to your recovery roll. Oh, how does that work? Are you just singing or? I'm just, you know, saying awesome, positive, soothing things. And, you know. Mm. He's just cool to be around. We're not cool, going, you know. He goes, uh, stands like buddy. Campfire yeah, yeah, stories. It's an hour long situation, which I would also like to take. Yeah, yeah. stories. I don't think I have to talk for an hour, so you're lucky. <laughs> 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 Disseminate my personality for a little while. Okay, so you can take that hour rest, and then you can also take your uh, night's rest as well, um, because nothing happens during the night. So you can get those recovery rolls in. Great. Mm -hmm. And 
So that brings me up to the full and everything. So okay, cool. cool. I'm feeling much better in the morning. Yeah, it too. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then um, basically, you know, it'll take you uh, a little while to get going um, back on back in the direction that you needed to go to originally. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually off in the distance, uh, after uh, hours and hours of travel uh, that, that go relatively uneventfully, uh, you see a tower-like structure off in the distance. And in fact, um, there are some creatures that you don't recognize at all. Uh, just sort of drifting through the air. Uh, this is this is after a full day of travel, so it's dusk, and uh, the sun is setting, and uh, you see this this tall, tall tower. It, it is topped it with sort of like a, almost like a big spike, I guess you would call it. Um, it may have some other effect in there. Mul multiple levels, and then these creatures that pay you no heed, uh, just sort of drifting by uh, above in the air and and they're huge right they're 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 the size of they're at least as big as you are if not if not considerably bigger um but they they, they seem to be just kind of moving over you um uh, paying you absolutely no heed whatsoever mm. and what so of, what sort of shape are these creatures uh, so you can, uh, as you can see in the beautiful image that we have uh, displayed there, they're, they're very long. They've got these long tendrils. They've got what looked like maybe some kind of large sort of almost glowing sacks of, of flesh in the, in the front of them. Maybe that's what keeps them buoyant. They do not have wings uh, and they just kind of float along lazily. But even as you approach the, the tower, which you believe to be the ruin that you had originally heard of, you don't have a name for this ruin. It's just uh, this, this tower. Uh, you know, they're already past and off in the distance. Tendrils come in so many shapes and sizes. <laughs> they're so useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kin, you are wise to take one for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I call welcome. that a, 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 a good uh, omen mm. as we approach our new home. Okay. And this is dusk, right? Yes. How about we make camp here for the night and we can explore the room tomorrow at daylight? That sounds smart. Mm -hmm. But we're so close. <laughs> you want to run around in the dark? Maybe. <laughs> we can run around in the dark around the camp safely. And then in the morning, we can go look at this ruin in the light. Kuro silently decides that he will keep a watch on Kin over the, over the evening. <laughs> he, he decides to go check it out on his own. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys are going to uh, rest again for the night, mm -hmm. um, we are uh, we, we will stop there because uh, I, I realized that I did not... Uh, I was going to, when I did the recap, I was going to hand out experience points and I completely forgot. So now we've got two sessions worth of, of XP that I will hand out. Um, but just as a teaser, um, we are going to put up a uh, piece of art yeah. that is going to show you uh, and, and everyone watching uh, what uh, creature is waiting for oh, you no. uh, outside this uh, <laughs> outside this tower that we will get to in the next session. No. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, this is one of my favorite creatures of all time and especially of Numenera, <laughs> so I cannot wait. So that will happen in two weeks. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Chat has been on fire tonight, so uh, oh, the whole team will have to, I saved some quotes, but it, as we prepare for uh, getting caught up for the next session, you'll have to watch some chat because they were just brilliant. So thank you so much for joining us. Are uh, we before, gonna do XP now? Before we go though, um, right. so uh, for, for your investigation of the, <laughs> Uh, the failed outpost last time, it's two XP. And for your uh, investigation of the wreckage 
recovering, especially um, perhaps finding that it has a link to uh, a nearby aldea um, that, that might prove to be significant. Um, that's another two XP. So it's a little four XP for everyone. Cool. Thank you. Yay. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us more than others. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, what did you say, Bruce? I say I may have to apply that to some advancement next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. Cool. How fun. Yeah, All right. Gonna... You know, I'm not sure actually we've told uh, everybody watching, but we've actually started with tier two characters. Right. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to post these characters at some point so everyone can see uh, the stats and whatnot. But uh, we did not start at tier one, mostly because... Uh, the, the town's not going to send tier one characters out on this important expedition. Uh, it's, it's, it's too vital to set up this outpost. So With nothing but some that. float wagons between them and the, uh, <laughs> the sisters. Yes, they sent the best. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah. Uh, chat was great. Let us know where we're, the Raven wants what you have just ended last week. So I, I don't have any more new news about that, which makes me sad. But what is getting me through the sadness is the fact that people are getting their black cubes and starting their own games and uh, mostly just discovering what lies within them. So that has been a delight. And you should definitely take a look at that on Twitter and Facebook to see what people are saying and, and some unboxing vi videos. It's been really making us happy. And of course, the Discord, which I'll put a link to, is uh, all a flutter with uh, secrets about it as people are working through and finding alleged secrets that de we definitely know nothing about. But if you want to know <laughs> the very unsanctioned secrets discussion uh go ask for permission for that channel and uh keep your keep your wacky theories to yourselves okay you know no <laughs> one needs to hear you're out there theorizing about what may or may not be in the cube <laughs> in all seriousness uh i'm switching gears from numenera to invisible right. sun here uh it has been uh really wonderful to see everyone and that we've watched some of uh, people's unboxing videos and and seeing everyone's comments uh, it's been great. We're so happy to finally get that into people's hands. And, you know, we are just as excited uh, about getting Numenera 2 into people's hands. And uh, we are uh, we are looking toward, um, you know, fulfilling that very soon. And then, of course, well, there's going to be Gen Con. And then after that, it'll be in stores. And we're very excited. Absolutely. Okay. I was going to say it also uh, last weekend was, or two weekends ago was Free RPG Day, and our Free RPG Day adventure, Ashes of the Sea, is also a preview of New Era, Numenera Discovery and Destiny, and we are going to uh, be releasing that on our website uh, perhaps next month, and uh, so you, if you haven't had a chance to look at our, our new Numenera Discovery and Destiny, take a look at Ashes of the Sea, and the, some of the previews of the salvaging rules are there. Oh, and one last plug: if you uh, if you don't subscribe to our website, you should because we have been doing a bunch of previews and articles about Numenera Two. Uh, we're very excited about that coming up, and they've been very informative. So, uh, MonticoGames.com is your source of all information for for this stuff. Absolutely, uh, that's the and and I I've loved seeing it too because you know I've I've been playing and getting to read it, but uh, I didn't know all the stories about how it got designed. So it's definitely some really juicy material and some preview of the beautiful art. So uh, go and check that out and subscribe for updates when we post new art, web articles for you. Um, other than that, we will see you in two weeks. Uh, we've got some other fun Twitch things coming down the pipe, but they're gonna be sort of getting up to speed as Raven wants as ended. So let us know what you really like to see. Um, I certainly uh, loved creative space and I'm eager to hear Monty and Shauna talking shop again soon. So I will be pestering them to do that again because that was really lovely. Uh, they did one on world building and they did, you know, they sort of free wheel discussion it. So get excited, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on, uh, on Twitch and Twitter and Facebook and we adore you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and being so engaged and delighted in chat. That makes our day. <laughs> We will see you soon, uh, sp specifically next uh, in two weeks. Two weeks. Goodbye, Ooh. everybody. Stay safe. <laughs>